uh, what was it, Slack the other day, but this is like what they actually turned out looking like. Uh, let's see, I'll find one that's complicated. So these, this is how I did my dialogue planning for my um, quest. So it's like there's the start greeting here. This all the greener what the player says, um, and then you can sort of see how like things connect. And like if you say this, she kick, it kicks you back here. If you say this, um, it uh, kicks you down here. And then this is so like examples of you know haunted since what. And then if you do this conversation path, you can get more information about the haunting. And if you do this conversation path, you know if you tell him you believe him that there's really a ghost, like he gives you more information. If you tell him. You don't believe him, then he won't actually talk to you anymore. Stuff like that. So if you're looking for a good, solid way to plan out scenes, this is a really good one. Um, they also look a lot nicer on your portfolio that way. Yeah. Mind Mup. So I hate Mind Mup for everything except for apparently this. But you can use Visio too. I, I think it was you who was using Visio to do it. Right. Yeah, or whatever you were using. I don't, I don't remember. But yeah, Visio, Draw.io, and... Um, the mind map are, are good places to go. Okay, so we're gonna go sort of pick up back where we left off here today. Uh, we'll turn off our lighting. Oh yeah, hotkeys, in case you guys forgot. Um, A turns on and off your lighting, and six turns on and off your sky. So um, if you wanna see your game, like no lights at all, I just wanna edit meshes, just hit A and six until it looks totally flat and washed out, and that'll do it for you. Um, okay, so. Nav mesh. Again, the way that you sort of access and can see the nav mesh is you click on this little button that sort of looks like a bunch of connect blocks put together. Um, and then editing points, you just, you know, you can click and then hit control, click again, hit control, and then right click. That right clicking makes a new one. If you ever find yourself like, I want to put a point over here, but you have these two selected, just click somewhere else and then you won't be selected anymore. You can also add points along a line by right clicking. Um, and then you can connect them, just do control, control, control. If you hit A, it fills in the thing. So again, if you're trying to make a new triangle, it's right click, right click, right click. Oh shit. Control. And then you hit A. Seriously. A fills in the space like that. Um, those of you who have done a little bit of work on your AI already, we'll notice that they do not like to go outside of the nav mesh area. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, another thing is make sure you're editing your nav mesh in a view sort of like this, because if you edit it from above and you have like differentiation in your terrain, hold on, call it, um, then you can end up putting points like up in the sky like this, and then your AI will look like they're walking up and down through the sky. Uh, you don't want that. Colin, what was your question? I don't recommend doing that. Um, you can. There's nothing like wrong with that method, but I I tend to prefer to do it by hand. It doesn't really take that long. If you like it, the giant city that I had, it took me about 30 minutes to do the nav mesh for it, and it was a lot cleaner because. It doesn't know always that things like the roof should be inaccessible. And so sometimes you'll forget, like, you know, you'll, you'll clean it up in, in the, the area here and forget to do the stuff on top and your AI will, will disappear and it's because they're standing on the roof. Um, so you can, it's, it's just a personal preference, but I prefer to do it by hand because it gives the developer a lot more control. Um, and again, Bethesda's defaults, in case you guys haven't figured it out, are a little bit outdated and a little bit bad. So if you see stuff online, make sure you verify it in the editor and verify that like the buttons they're talking about even still exist because a lot of the documentation is for Skyrim and Skyrim works very differently. Okay, does anybody have any questions about this nav mesh stuff before we sort of move on to the other stuff I wanted to cover? No? Cool. Um, one more thing I want to say, if I have two AI and I want them to be in different areas, um, if you leave a blank space in your nav mesh, they just won't go. So I could put another AI who I didn't want to go over by her um, like in this area, and then nobody would walk in the middle here. That if, if there's no nav mesh, they won't use their AI packages there. So you can create sort of like differentiated areas. That's how I did a lot of that stuff in the city where there were like 10 AI walking up and down was I chunked it. So like 
the lady who was going around digging up weeds only went in the one area, and then the guy who was praying to the cult leader's house only went in, like, a different area. It keeps AI from running into each other. Um, have you guys talked at all or figured out um, markers, AI markers yet, and how to, like, link AI to markers? I don't know what you guys have watched video-wise. Video okay, so I won't cover that. Is that okay? Okay, great. If you have any more questions about it, we can talk about it individually. Oh yeah, I mentioned this. If anyone's not listening to me and just wants to work on their own and you have individual questions, write them over there. Just write your name so that I know like when I'm done talking, I'll come find you guys in that order. Um, okay, so, okay, adding items to your quest. So you guys should all, are all feasibly doing some sort of fetch quest or like you gotta pick up an item and set a stage type of thing. So this is a little papyrusy and we will talk about that. Um, the, so there's, there's two sort of ways to do it. I'm going to show you guys the more basic way. Um, if you want, like, I kill an enemy and they drop an item, that's just, like, two more steps of complication. That's It's definitely doable, but it's just something I'll have to show you guys at another time um, or after this first method. So this first method is the basic fetch quest method of, like, I'm going to walk into this room, pick up Aspen's box of stuff, and then it will set my quest stage to, like, 20 or whatever. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is make sure that my quest stage is doing the things I want it to do. So we only have two quest stages right now. So let's make a new one. We're going to go, we're going to do a 20 and we're going to go here. We're going to say, I picked up Aspen's box of stuff and then designer notes. We're going to write here, set to this stage when box of stuff picked up. All right. So did anybody get to watch my video about thick debugging, like why my quest wasn't showing objectives. No? Okay, it's up there, so watch it if you have questions. Um, the short answer was I forgot a line of code, and that's a really easy fix. So in your quest stage, you'll notice this papyrus fragment over here. Papyrus is the language that all the scripting is done in. Um, if you open a new papyrus script, you will notice that it opens in your notebook, or your notepad, um, which means that debugging is not a thing that it does very well. So, you know, code with code mindfully because it's not very easy to debug your stuff. It's not like Visual Studio where it tells you where the errors are. Uh, okay, so over here, we're gonna write two lines of code. Um, these are basically just a line that says, I'm gonna tell you to display an objective when you get to this stage, and I'm gonna tell you to set an objective to complete it when you get to this stage. And the way that we do that is by writing set objective displayed. And then in parentheses, you're gonna put the number, the objective number you wanna set displayed. So I'm going to call it 20. We don't have an objective yet, but we'll get there. So that's basically just saying the set objective display is a built-in function. So I want you to do this thing that you already know how to do for objective 20. And we're going to set objective completed also 20. We're going to hit compile. Always hit compile because otherwise you will enter the game and your code will be like, no, and you won't know why. Um, okay, quest objectives. So again, I went stage first, wrote those two lines of code. Now I go over here. Oh, I do have an objective 20. So I'm just going to say fetched the item. Again, that's just in the quest objectives tab. You can change the objective index. And your objective index just has to match the quest stage index over here. So like if I wanted to show the objective talk to the quest giver instead, I would just change this to say set objective display 10 and 10 instead of 20 and 20. Um, does that make sense to everybody? Yeah? OK, great. So here we go. Now we're going to hit compile one more time, because why not? Uh, oh yeah, by the way, if you hit compile on any quest stage, it compiles the papyrus fragments for every quest stage. It's best practice to do it on the stage you want, but if you just like click into here and hit compile on zero, it'll, it'll do it for all of them. Okay, okay. And now we're going to save this really quick. Now, an important thing to know, you should not put scripts on the objects that are in the inspector window over here, unless they are your custom objects. I showed a couple of you guys how to make custom ammo boxes yesterday. Those type of things you can put scripts on because they're your custom objects. The like, things like an ant, like, like this box of crap or like these sugar bombs or whatever, these are okay to edit and put scripts on because they are individual instances. There's just one. It's not like the data that that's included in. You wouldn't want to put a script on something like this door because this door already has scripts on it. But if I dragged one into the world, which I'm not going to do because that'll break everything, um, then I could put a script on it if I wanted. 
Does that make sense? Yes, good. Don't put scripts on objects in the inspector window. All right, we're going to double click on here. If you go to scripts, that's the last tab. If you open it and you're like, Aspen, I don't see the script tab. It's because you have to like go on a vision quest to find it. Uh, okay, so back here, we're going to hit add. And the first thing that's going to pop up is like, what do you want me to do? You should make a new script. I'll show you guys how to use default scripts in a little bit. You can use default scripts for things like you have to kill five enemies before you move on to the next phase. Um, that You don't have to worry about actually like writing that yourself. That's something that Bethesda is smart enough to know a lot of people are going to want to do. But things like activate and change a quest stage, you, you want to do that yourself. So you're just going to double click on new script here. And you're going to see this little window pop up. Be sure not to just hit enter because you want to rename your script. Another thing to note is that you want to try to get your script names, or I'm sorry, your scripts correct on the first go because like what, what happened to me the first time I did this was I created a script called like project one retrieve and then I screwed it up. And so I had to like create a new one and delete the old one. And you sometimes have to go like way deep in your data files to get it right. It's, it's just kind of complicated. So just code mindfully, code with intention, and know that like if you if you screw up, it's easy to fix, but if you screw up bad like I did, then it's a lot more difficult. So we're just gonna call this grab oh, zero zero I see. Nope, you actually can't put numbers, that's right. Uh, so we're just gonna call it grab the stuff. All right, don't worry about a namespace, and it should extend the object reference. The object reference is the physical specific, like this particular box of stuff and not the, the default box of stuff that's in the editor over here. So that's what you want. Okay. Now it's gonna freeze. Um, okay, the next thing that's gonna pop up are properties. So properties are basically variables in Papyrus. Um, you can set a lot of stuff as properties, I'll show you. Um, be aware though that once you set a property to a certain type, you can't change what type it is. So this was another thing that happened to me. I had a property called like Sophia's radio and I wanted it to be an object reference or a quest reference, but I forgot to change the type. And so I had to make like five different properties all called like the real Sophia's radio. No, not that one, this one, shit like that. So you're gonna hit add property and see this is the window that you don't want to ignore here. Um, so you can drop this down and pick any kind of thing you want it to be. You, the world is your oyster. Um, so what we're going to do is basically try to make it so that when we pick up this object, it's going to set a quest stage to 20, well, the quest stage that we just did. So we're going to scroll down until we find a quest here. Oh, some of you were asking about keys. You, key is like a, an available thing that you can set as a property. So if you want, like, when I get this key, then it sets my quest stage, then you can do that in scripts. We're just going to use the quest property and we're going to call it... Um, fetch quest. Give these meaningful names so that you know what they are. Uh, if When you get into more complicated stuff, you might have, like, I had a quest, um, the, the one with the cult that I showed you, where there were two different endings and they were each handled by a different quest. So one was called the Hyacinth Girl and one was called the Hollow Men. And um, so I, I called, like, my quest property for the Hyacinth Girl, Hyacinth Girl, and one for Hollow Men, Hollow Men. If I had just called them, like, quest one and quest two, I probably would have forgotten what they were. So just, like, when you're coding in Unity or you know, Unreal, whatever, give your variables meaningful names. Okay, we're going to hit add quest constant. There we go. So it tells you the type, it tells you its name, and then the default value is set to none. To change that, we go over here to edit value. Autofill, not going to work for you. So you're going to want to do edit value. It will, you can set filters, so like it'll only show you your custom stuff or whatever, but I've never used that option. This is another good reason to name your stuff with your initials at the beginning. Look at that. When I drop it down, it's the first one that I have. So now we have a variable called fetch quest, and it is its value is by default set to 000ac demo quest for lab. There we go. We're going to hit OK. We're going to hit OK. We're going to save before we try to script, because if worse comes to worse, we can just leave. So we're going to open this again right here. Instead of clicking properties, add, remove, or even double clicking on this, you're gonna right click and you're gonna go to edit source. Edit source will open it in your notepad and you can now edit it. Uh, you'll see your property listed up at the top right here. And then underneath the world is your oyster again. Um, like I mentioned before, Papyrus does not use regular coding syntax. So you don't need to worry about um, semicolons at the end of your lines or curly braces because 
again, anarchy is fun, I guess. Um, so we're going to, I have to look at how I did this before because I forgot. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, if you're ever wondering, like, I'm going to need to know how to do this later and I might forget, just take screenshots of your code and save them to your uh, desktop or to like a folder on your desktop as to reference for later for exactly this situation. Like I haven't written this script in a year, so I forgot how to do it. Um, but I can show you here and then show you in the editor. So again, just like at, in my last one, you see up the top, we have quest property, fetch object, auto constant. That's what that means. Auto constant is just like the papyrus by default assigning, like, this is a constant object. It's not going to change. It'll, you can set things to be like conditional or, um, I don't know. Conditional and constant are the only two you need to worry about. But for this one, we're just going to do constant. Uh, okay, here we go. So now we're going to type a very simple line, which is event, and then in parentheses, on... Wait, is it in parentheses? Nope, it's not. Um, event on activate. So this is, again, it's like a default built-in function, like the transform function in Unity. Um, it knows what to do with this. We're going to type object reference. And then ak action ref. ak action ref is a fancy papyrus way of saying this one, this one right here, the specific one. Um, you can do like ak actor references, ak object references, whatever it is. Um, that basically it's like again, this very very specific instance of the specific object is the one that the script is pointing to when you use ak action ref. It's just like a default variable that's in the thing. Uh, so now we're going to look at um, why I typed object reference. Object reference, once again, is referring to the object up here. It is extending the object reference, and so we want to extend the object reference here, too. You can also do this with reference aliases, like how you guys set up your quest alias to be your NPC. Um, that you see, I could have this be like script name, grab the stuff, extends reference alias constant, and then down here I would type event on activate reference alias, aka action ref. But since we don't have that, we're just going to do this. Okay. Uh, now we need to do another thing, which is remember stuff. So under here, we're going to type... Um, see how I have like this variable here that notes fetch quest is the name that I gave the property? So it knows that fetch quest is a quest, and so it inherits all the things that a quest knows how to do, including set a stage. So we're going to go fetch quest dot set stage. Have you guys used these console commands yet? You can, you can, if you're trying to just like test, does my AI work at this one particular stage, you can type this exact thing into the console in Fallout and it will set your quest to that stage. There's a big, um, I think it's on the Fallout wiki. I'll post it on Slack. Um, like sheet that has all of the Fallout console commands. There's some really useful ones. Like you can toggle AI, you can toggle no clip, you can toggle God mode, stuff like that. Um, changing quest stages, but you cannot go back to another quest stage. Don't try that, it will corrupt your data. Um, okay, so fetch quest stage 20. We want that to happen when we are when we activate this object by picking it up, we wanna set the stage of fetch quest to 20. That's the stage that I built that is specifically for when you pick up this object, it's gonna display the objective like, yay, you did it. Um, okay, now we're going to do, I think it's end event. Let's see, yes, okay, there we go. So at the end of each, in the same way that you do curly brackets in Unity or Java or whatever, um, you have end event here. You can also do the same thing for like if statements. So it would just be like if, and then you do end if down here. Um, I'm not sure if the capitalization matters in this editor. I don't like to mess with that type of stuff because I don't know if it's true. So that's what we've got for that. All right, so now if we hit save, down here it will say, hooray, compiled. If you get something like, um, I'm trying to see what a common error is. Oh God. Uh, okay, so like if I took out this point here and try to compile it by hitting save, see it says compilation failed. Are you sure you want to save? You should hit no. If it asks you if you wanted to save when it failed, you should always hit no. So don't just like recklessly hit enter when this window pops up because sometimes it says good job and sometimes it says bad job. All right, so there we go. So now we have an object that when we pick it up or the event activate, it's going to set our quest stage to 20. We don't need to do anything else in this script. This script is done now. We're good. Okay. Hit okay again. And now we're just going to, there we go. 
All right. So now we have, again, I'll sort of go over the relationship between the two because it's kind of confusing. So we have on this object a script that is referencing our quest as a property. And it's creating an action that's happening on that quest. Now in our quest, we've got... This, this was the part that took me the longest to understand, so I'm over-explaining it for you guys. Like, sorry. Um, we've got our set objective displayed and set objective completed. If you wanted to, you could write these two lines. You could write, like, what was it? Fetch quest dot set objective displayed and fetch quest dot set objective completed in that script on the box of stuff that we just wrote, but it wouldn't change the quest stage. And at this point in your guys' quest, you should really just be editing stuff based on quest stage. Um, so there we go. Okay. Make sure you compile it with me again. So now we have an object that has a script attached to it. It's a custom script. It's only on this one. It's not on the one in the default. And our quest knows what it is, and it knows what um, to do when we pick that object up, basically. And again, we told the quest, like, at this, at this point, show these things. So before we move on and actually test it, I'm wondering if I can show you guys anything else because opening the editor takes so damn long. Uh, when picked up, adding it, oh, adding it in, well, I don't really want to add it into this room. So, um, well, I guess I can. Okay. Have any of you guys added enemies to your spaces yet? Raise your hand if you have. Yeah? Okay. So you, you might know this stuff or my way might be different than yours. It's probably not because there's really only one way to do it. Um, if you guys want to have something like, you know, I don't know. I'm going to put a blood bug in here. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, you can find blood bugs and other actors like this, sort of just like in the editor, if you don't want to mess with them and just like want to have a standard one like this, you can scroll down till you find the actors. In case you haven't figured out, they're the ones that look sort of like creepers from Minecraft. They have like those big eyes or whatever. Um, and you can just drag one in and it'll look like this. Hello. Um, and it, it knows what to do. It like knows how to behave. So if we open this, actually let's open it. These use what are called templates. Um, so it, it like basically knows what to do with, with this, um, like data that it has built into it. So again, see how we have like ink, ink, blood, 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 bug, God, a one template over here. So that's a template that the game knows, like, okay, I should attack the player. Oh my god. When I um when I see them, you know, stuff like that. You can dig into these a little bit if you want to, but there's not really that much of a need to. Another thing you can do um, to put enemies in your world is to search for level. So this is a way to do um, leveled actors, like if you want, you know, a raider. You'll drag it in and you'll just see this. This is just basically like a standard, uh, it's it's going to generate a raider's body, and it's going to be level one. They have levels for all sorts of stuff. So, like, Mr. Gusty, if you want to fight a stupid robot, uh, yes. You put M, and you can see. Uh, so, yeah, again, so, like, a raider here, a ghoul, and you can look in these templates and see exactly what you're getting yourself into. I put what I thought was a regular, um, what are the naked rats called? Thank you. Um, I put what I thought was a regular mole rat in mine, and it turned out it was like a legendary mother mole rat in my first quest, and Skinner was like, you couldn't beat my quest because my enemy was too hard. Uh, so just make sure that it's not like level raider, crazy, absurd, I'm gonna kick your ass type of thing. Um, we'll put, oh, it's probably gonna kill my AI, but does that make sense to you guys how to add uh, an enemy? And they, like I said, they have built-in data that will show you, like, you know, I'm going to attack you when we do this, when we, when we go in here and do this thing. I'm wondering, mm, hardcore level bugs? No, I don't want that. Uh, level raider bugs. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Yes, we'll get there next. Uh, thank you for reminding me. So I will show you how to do that before we close the editor, because that's a really good point. So finishing the quest is really, really easy. Um, you're actually going to be kind of pissed how easy it is. So all you have to do to finish the quest is say I want the quest to end when I pick up the box of stuff. See that box? You just check it. 
Um, so this will tell a quest, like, you're done, and it'll display that thing up in the corner that says, like, I don't remember what my quest is called, like, good job, you did it. Um, well, this one, fetch quest. And this is another reason it's important to assign, um, an XP amount, because if you don't, the quest will try to give you XP, but if you can't get XP, then it sort of kicks back in, like, a weird little loop, and sometimes your quest won't finish. Uh, you can set this quest stage to be on like a different I'm sorry you can set this um, complete box to be on any quest stage you want you can also set it through script but there's literally no reason to do that because you should always have a separate phase for when your script I'm sorry excuse me when your quest gets completed does that make sense to everybody just a checkbox yeah Nothing. So, um, the... Oh, I guess I can show you how to do that, too, through dialogue. So, let's make another quest stage, um, and we'll do that. So, we're gonna go talk... I gave Aspen her stuff back, and she finished the quest. Alright, so now we're gonna call this ending phase. And we're gonna check complete quest. We're gonna write set objective displayed 30 and then we're going to do set objective completed 30. By the way, you can write these to be any number you want. So if I want to display objective 20 again, which is like go give Aspen her stuff back, you just change it to that. You don't have to write these, like the, the displayed and completed don't have to be the same number. So you can set as many like objectives displayed as you want. If like you want to remind the player of the five things they're supposed to do, but only tell them they already did one, you can do that really easily. Uh, okay, so there we go. Now we have a new quest stage. Please don't freeze. Okay, quest objectives. We're going to make a new one. New. We're going to call it, we're going to say, give Aspen her stuff back. Now we're going to make a new scene. I'm not going to make a long scene because I don't want to. Uh, end scene. Okay. So, remember last time I showed you guys how to do it? Are you kidding me? Okay. Patience and grace. If you guys haven't heard that from Steve yet, you will. Uh, okay. There we go. So, now if you'll remember, over here, I had it set the quest stage to 10 when I was done, so I knew to go get the box of stuff. Now, over here, in end scene, we're going to do... This, we're going to add me, and I'm going to say, you got, no, hang on, I lied, that's not where you do it. You hit cancel, and you hit OK, and you don't do anything. And now, now we click into it, and now we go, you got my box of stuff. Congratulations. Here's your stuff. And I'll show you guys how to give the player stuff, too. Okay, there we go. We're gonna hit OK. We're gonna hit OK. We're gonna close this. We're gonna save again because my computer is slowly dying. Um, all right, here we go. Now, if we open this again, we're gonna add a couple parameters again so that the only me says it and I only say it at the right time. So get is ID, just like I showed you guys last time. <laughs> it's 420. Blaze it. Um, okay. There we go. So if actor is me, correct. We're going to set a second one now, which is to check the stage. Since now we have two scenes, you always want to tell your character what to say at what different times. So we're going to do, instead of get is ID, we're going to scroll all the way down until, until we find get stage. And now we're going to set it to, I think the stage at this point is 20. So, no wait, is it 30? Is it 30? Did I set to 30? Okay, thank you. Um, Okay, then I need to change what I did at one point. Okay, so great. Now the quest stage is 30. Here we go. Uh, okay, so if the stage is 30 and it's me, I'm going to hang on. I need to check and make sure that's true. Okay, so basically the problem that I had was like, I didn't have a stage just to end the quest, which I needed to end the quest. So this is for oh, seriously, end the quest. So because I have it set to 30 um, in my script, I want to be able to like, okay, 30 is like give Aspen her stuff back. So I actually don't want to set that objective to be completed until after I talk to Aspen again. 
So I just want to display the objective at stage 30. And then when I get to stage 40, that's when I want to set it completed. There we go. Okay. Back to the scene. Here we go. So if you guys want to have um, dialogue where like your NPC just says something back to you without you, uh, without like, you having to write four different dialogue options for your player, that's really possible. You just right click in here, do new action, do dialogue, hit OK. And now you see action one camera. You just click in here. You can do, seriously, an info, just do new, open it, and you should see this, this growingly familiar, this window. OK, response text. OK, here we go. And I want to say, you brought sparks joy. There we go. Okay. So now we know that this sparks joy. And when I'm done saying that, I'm going to set the parent quest stage to 40, which will end my quest. So there we go. Now you should talk to Aspen. She should say, you got my box of stuff. Congratulations. Here's your stuff. And then next she should say, this sparks joy. And then it will set my quest stage to 40, where I will tick this box to complete the quest at the end. Does that make sense? How to talk to an NPC and do it? Yeah. Okay. Um, you can also do these a little bit more intricately. Like if you wanted to have it say, when you say this thing, it sets it to stage 20. Um, on just this specific dialogue option, you can do the set parent quest stage here to 20 or whatever you want to. Uh, so you don't have to have like all of them end in the same thing. Yeah. Yes, if you don't complete set all your objectives to completed, they'll still just be like living in your pit boy. But because you complete the quest, it'll be like filed under a different thing. Um, but there's, I think there are some quests in the base game where like you can complete them but not max them out. Like you can, there's like optional objectives and stuff like that that you can still do after the quest is done. They just won't add to the XP you get from doing them. You can just. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then in oh you're right there we go thank you good catch uh yeah that was just a typo on my part so yes to to complete your quest like the best way you should have all your objectives completed and um, again you should have a quest stage for beginning your quest for a basic fetch quest you'll probably want five stages one is talk to your NPC two is go get the item three is return to the NPC and then four is end the quest. Um, to, end, to add a reward to the player, I'm going to have to open my old plugin and take a look at how I did that because I can't remember off the top of my head. But, um, okay, let's do that really quick. I think this one takes the least time to open. All right, so now we have to wait for it to open. Does anybody have anything else while I'm waiting? No? Cool. Okay. Are you guys feeling completely overwhelmed yet? Yeah? Okay. Um, again, I mentioned this to you, I think. If you guys feel like your quests are too complicated and you want to simplify them, just mention it to Skinner. He usually does not have a problem with what people wanting to simplify as long as you have a good reason. Um, the other thing is, again, like I said before, the thing that is the biggest time sink aside from doing aesthetics in these maps is adding and editing dialogue. Um, and that's something that you, like I said before, really, really want to try to do right on the first time because if you sink yourself into writing a scene and making like changing this, the quest stages at different, you know, you different options and things like that, um, and then have to go back and change it later, it's really, really frustrating and annoying. Um, it's you, you can get to a point where like you just want to start a new quest. Yes, I know you are angry. Um, okay, so let's go to. Oh yeah, have you guys figured out about recent cells yet? Recent cells is a useful thing. So recent cells is um, a way that you can just add cells that are in the Commonwealth to your like library. So you don't have to scroll through the whole like library of all the cells in the Commonwealth and try to find your stuff. Um, you just do that by, we'll, we'll see when Reaperino opens. I can show you guys how to do it. I don't want to do it right now because it'll be scared. Oh yeah, somebody asked me yesterday about weird visual artifacts that sometimes happen in the editor window. Like as you can see, we live in a sea of purple hell right now. Um, those usually go away. Sometimes you'll get 
weird shit that happens. Like, I tried to open an actor editor, and instead her face opened, like, right in my face, and it stayed on my entire editor window as, like, a ghostly see-through face for the entire time I was editing. Um, If that happens to you, just save close your editor and restart it because I don't know why those things happen, but it seems like a recipe for corrupted data. So just avoid that if possible. Okie dokie. Where did I put him down? Haven't edited this project in a while. Oh wait, he's not, it's not on him, it's on the quest. Okay. There we go. I think it's this one. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so this is how you add items to the player. We'll go do that in the example quest I'm building for you guys so that you can actually see. Sorry, we have to open and close stuff. I know it's weird and annoying, but... Um, okay, file data. Um, another thing you guys should be aware of is if you're trying to uh, like package your your maps and stuff like that. There's a, a weird sort of process that you have to go through to do it, but there's a good Guildhall wiki page on it. So if you guys are like, you basically, in order for Skinner to play it on his machine in the game, he, you need to have what's called a .ba2 file. It's like a batch file of some weird kind. Um, and to do that, there's like a tool that's built into the creation kit editor, but you have to package some like default scripts and all your quest data and everything like that in there to make it so that other people can play it on their machines, not through the editor. Um, but there, like I said, there's a Guildhall wiki page and next Tuesday before your guys' deadline, we'll go through packaging so that you can see how it's done. Um, cause your deadline's next Friday, right? Yeah. Don't package the day of your assignment in case Unreal Tournament didn't teach you that. Yeah. Also these editor tips, like where it says like, you can edit the out of date dialogue, like right in the menu. No, you can't. Don't listen. Don't listen to Fallout. It's lying. All right. So here we are, we're back in our familiar territory. Um, we're going to, by the way, you don't need to have anything open in your editor window to edit a quest, but to me, it's really weird not to have something like in this window. So if you, you don't, you don't need to, but it's, it, it, you, you can. All right, so here we are at quest 40. We want her to give me some stuff. So to do that, we are going to look at how I did it. So the, again, this is another function that the game knows how to do. It knows how to give the player stuff. You just have to remember where to put your parentheses and your, um, like your commas and stuff like that. That's the trick with Papyrus is just knowing where to put all that stuff. So, all right, we're going to set objective completed. And after the objective is set to completed, we're going to do game dot get player. And that's a function. So we want to do that with this. Do you guys know why you do the parentheses? This just tells it to run a function. I don't know if Forceth explained that to you like a hundred times, but that's why you do it. Uh, and then you're gonna put another dot to tell it what to do with the get player function. You're gonna do add item. And you are, I think you have to put a property. No, you don't. If you know the name of the item you wanna add, you don't need to add a property to the script. So just like search for it in the editor. Like we're gonna do caps because I don't know everything's worth caps in this game. Uh, caps, oh, one, and we're just going to give me you 15 caps for doing this for me. We're going to hit compile and then hope that it works. Uh, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Properties. Okay, so if you saw what happened there, here I'll compile this again so you can see. Um, it told me that this variable caps 001 is undefined and the game is right. The game is always right, much like the customer. Uh, here we go. So now we're going to add a property to this. The same way that we added a quest property to the um, the script before, we're going to add a property here too. But I can't remember what kind of object it is, so we're going to search for it in the editor window first. Hang on, I'm just going to delete this. Uh, so that we don't we don't need more AC in here. Don't turn that on. It's so cool. I hope you did. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, oh, good. Okay. So we're going to search for caps. So if you ever want to know what something, like its type is, like I didn't know what kind of property it should be. So see how I searched for caps, and I knew that caps 001 was the item I was looking for, and it says misc over here. So I know that when I make a property, I'm going to want it to be a miscellaneous item or a miscellaneous property. 
uh, and that will allow me to, you know, reference it basically in my script. But like, if I had this and I tried to make it like a static object, it wouldn't know what to do. It would be very scared and confused. Oh God. All right. Now we're going to go back up here. Quest. I know you don't have that. There we go. And on 40, I'm going to do game.getplayer.add item. Oh, right. Hang on. I need to property first. Add property. We're going to call it caps. And we're going to make it not an integer, but a miscellaneous property. Misc object. There we go. Okay. And now it should pop up. Here we go. And then you should be able to see if you hit edit value the drop down with all of the things that you might be able to give the player. So like if I wanted to give you a bunch of beakers for doing my quest, I could do that here or a bunch of bloat fly glands for doing my quest. I could do that here. Bobbleheads, bones, whatever I want. Uh, I'm going to give you guys caps because I care about you, I guess. Uh, caps, 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 mm -hmm. caps. Oh, Oh one cap. There's some weird stuff in this game. All right. So now we have caps, as, an, uh, as a miscellaneous object constant on here, we're going to hit OK, add item, and then here we're going to do caps, comma, 10. So you guys got 10 bucks for doing it. We're going to hit compile, and if it pauses for a second, that usually means you did a good job, because it means that the window's not going to pop up and tell you you did something wrong immediately. Is it caps or caps 001? The name of the property is caps. The name of the object is caps 001. So you don't actually need to worry about what this is called. It's this value that you want to match. So you could call this like parts and it would be, sorry, I mean, it's teaching like middle school boys. Um, then you could like say like you get 10 parts for completing my quest and it would be fine. Uh, okay. We're gonna hit compile again. We're going to hit. Okay. I wonder if this Raider is going to immediately kill my character or did I not add one? Okay. Did not add one. That's a good thing. So let's test this, unless anybody wants anything else before we leave the editor. We'll come back to the editor, but anybody, anything else? No? Okay, great. We're going to test it. Push it to PC, push it to Earth, hit save. We're going to close this. We're going to wait just a minute. That open this. <laughs> okay. Blah blah blah. Oh yeah. Um I if anybody knows a way to disable automatic updates on games in Steam, broadcast that to the Earth, because Fallout's update system will, like, it, it screws up a lot of stuff. Can you? Okay, because I've wondered how to do it for a while. I know some people tried. You can't? That's what I was afraid you were going to say. <laughs> no. Probably? I don't know if you can edit in the editor and push stuff to your PC without being online, though. Uh, okay, let's go to... I think this mod is already in my file? Yeah, they really, really want you to be screwed over. We're going to do load. Uh, we don't want to go in here. We're going to go to Commonwealth. Yeah. Uh-huh. What do you mean? Oh, 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 oh. Um... Some just won't show up. Like, yesterday I was trying to help Richard make an ammo box, and I was editing the wrong piece of data. And so, like, I was editing the green question mark instead of, like, the, the chest one. And so 
It's just like a different data type. I would avoid using the yellow question mark ones. Those are usually like lighting templates and stuff. Yeah. Everything else should be fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, good to know. Yeah, that's possible. Okay, so let's talk to Aspen and see how her shit's going. Oh, you did? Okay, sorry. Uh huh. Uh, there's a button that will make you that will let you do that. I'll show you guys that in just a second once we test to see if this is working. It's called Havoc Settle. Um, there's a button up at the top that is it's a, I guess it's HVK. It might be next to the sky or next to the something with gizmos on it. Yeah, that one. Um, make sure that you don't have it selected when you try to drag stuff into your world, though, because it'll, like, like Nuka-Cola bottles, for instance, have physics on them, and if you drag one in, it's like, and then it, like, flies away into space. Um, so, yeah. Okay, let's see. Fetch quest. Yay! Talk to the quest giver. I did it. Okay, now we're gonna grab my box of stuff. Here we go. Look at that. We fetched the item. Excellent job. I didn't make an objective that was returned to Aspen, so let's just see if it works. Uh, shoot, I didn't set the right quest stage. Uh, what's it called? Okay, well, anyway, it would have worked if we had done the right thing. I did a bad job. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So it's, I forgot my quest name again because I'm an idiot. But basically, what the reason that it's not working right now is because somewhere in a script, I have it setting it to stage 20 instead of stage 30, and I have this scene set to only run if it's at stage 30. Yeah. So if you set a different, like, basically, if, if she only knows to talk to you at, at stage 30 and the quest is at stage 20, she won't say the right thing to you. So that's a good way to, like, debug your stuff and see why it's not working. Um, nope, not that. She's like, please don't shoot me. Um, so we'll go fix it. And I'll also show you Havoc Settling while we're there. And then, um, that's probably enough for today. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Hmm. Okay. Uh, we can look at that. Fallout 4, uh, nope, not that one. I'm very angry that I forgot this. Forgot, write it down. Page. Page 101. This is where writing things down, like your quest names and stages, objectives, and cell names, comes in handy. I didn't take my own advice, I had a big ego. Yeah, so it's okay to have that purple background. Yep. Have that. It's not ideal, but it's what happens sometimes. Sometimes it'll be a sky. Sometimes it'll be, like, water. I've had visual artifacts. Like, someone had, like, white cross hatching on theirs yesterday. That's fine, too. Jesus Christ. Okay. Zero, zero. Oh, fuck. Okay. AC demo quest for lab. So, to debug the problem we just had, we're going to open up the script on the object that we coded to go to a certain quest stage. So, we're going to go here, we're going to do the stuff, we're going to right click, 
hit edit source and see how it's setting my quest stage to 20. I wanted to set it to 30 right here. So that was like, I knew right where the error was. And this is another reason that I think I told Ryan last time, like you should do one thing and then test it to see if it's working. And then like another thing and test to see if it's working because I knew exactly what I had broken. If you write like your whole quest script and then one thing isn't working, you're like, shit, what did I do that made it not work? Yes. Mm -hmm. You can do one, two, three if you want to. What I find is that um, I usually use one, two, three for like intermittent objectives. So like if quest, if stage 10 is talk to the NPC and stage 20 is like kill the raider who has the key that you need. If you decide you want to add something to your quest, like in the middle, you got to save a girl or whatever. You can make that like quest stage 15. And, but you, like I said before, you can't go back in quest stages. So if you just leave yourself like that sort of 10 stage gap in the middle, it's really easy to add stuff in. Yeah. All right. So there we go. Now we should have that problem fixed. I'll show you Havoc settling really quick. Um, if we get a miscellaneous object going here, well, let's see bottle. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. So I have a baby bottle now. We're going to lift it up. And then if I turn on, I want it to zoom in Havoc settle. Yeah. So that'll drop it to the ground, uh, like you were asking. This is a good thing to try with your level before you... Oh, shit. Sorry. I'm trying to use this one. Before you are done with it. Um, because what will sometimes happen is things like this. Like, um, if I have two boxes of sugar bombs that are, like, inside each other. Come on. Like that. And then I hit Havoc Settle. They, like, fall into each other. And then if I go into the world and look at this, this one that's, like, inside other ones basically like spasms because it doesn't know what to do and it'll like send stuff flying away like those shelves in that little house that I built that I showed you guys with all the like stuff piled on them um I had that problem with I think it was like the boxes of mac and cheese I stacked them too close together and they like exploded outwards the minute the player walked in and broke like all of the beautiful setup work I had done um so just just do it yep and make a ton of noise mm -hmm. It's true, yeah, and because everything in Fallout makes a horrible, like, snapping sound. And this is a good thing to do, like, after you're done placing stuff. So, I don't know if you noticed, but, like, some of my stuff was, like, an inch off the ground because I made this cell in, like, four seconds. So, see, like, my horse wouldn't actually stand there. The game, like, stuff like that. So, the, anyway, Havoc is just a good thing to have. You can't have Havoc and Effects on at the same time. I don't know. You can't. Uh, okay, there we go. So, we'll test this one more time. Um, yeah. Oh, a marker. Okay. Uh, that's easy. So, <laughs> shockingly, it's easy. Uh, you are going to do that using target references. So that's done through your quest script. So on your quest here, we have demo quest for lab. Um, if we go to the quest objectives tab, you can, like, okay. So she's going to send us to, I think this is fine whatever so we're going to do yeah there we go okay so this one if you hit right click here and you hit new so i'm in target ref right here you can pick a target alias so anything that you want to target has to be an alias of your quest like if you look see aspen alias is my only option so like if i wanted to make my box of stuff able to be targeted i would just have to make this a quest alias here so this is called you know whatever the hell this is called um you can do aliases. I, I actually don't think I could make that thing an alias because um, it's not like my own object, but we will try. We'll do our best. Sometimes what happens is if you make something an odd, like a, if you make like a bush that exists in Fallout, your objective, it'll target every single one in the world. So your map will be like full of objectives. Uh, la la la. Specific reference. Okay, there we go. So this is how you make like an alias, like we'll just call this box of stuff that isn't an actor. Like if it's a specific wall or a specific door that you want the player to go through, you're going to hit a uh, specific reference and then you're going to check select forks, select forced reference here. And then if you check that box, select in render window. Now, if I scroll over my little friend here, this little crosshair, that's what I'm selecting. So now you can see I have Misk Mod, PA, Helmet, Headlamp, which I know is the name of the thing I want. Then I can hit OK, and then I can hit OK. Now I have a new quest alias that I can target. Over in my back in my objectives tab, now I have Aspen alias targeted as my objective here. 
if I wanted to add one for this one, like I, I don't, I think this is going to break over. Here we go. We'll go here. Um, new. It wants to make this to me by default, but I can choose which one I want. Box of stuff is my new target here. And then on this one, I'm the target. So that's, that's how you add objectives. And they'll show up on your mini map as like a little green thing. And they'll also show up in the world too, as like a distance from them. Um, so this is good if you have a larger level and you want the player to know, like, you got to go over there to do it. It'll leave them that way. Yeah. It, it depends how much you want to lead the player. Um, if your quest is like a little bit about exploration, like that one that I built with the city was a, like more explory. The objective just led you to the front door and then you had to sort of find your way from there. But a lot of times in Fallout and Skyrim and games like that, they do do that type of stuff. So like if, if this was happening in a different room and I needed the box of stuff from another room, I might set a, an objective on the door there or like on the box of stuff in the other room. It, it's smart enough to know like where you should go to get that item. So, yeah. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Yep, it'll lead you like the right direction. Anything else before I close the editor? Great, okay. So let's test this, and then I gotta go because I have a meeting with the partner about my thesis. Oh yeah, by the way, you guys are still young wee babes, but uh, you'll start thinking of your thesis next semester. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, thesis is a different process than you think it is. That is what I will say. Um, it's it's really really awesome, but it's quite a lot of work, and so you want to make sure that you have like a really solid idea of what you want to do before you get started, and also that it's something that leads into what you want to do in the industry. Um, also, they don't broadcast this to LDs, but if you're like a hella good artist or a hella good programmer, you can do a programming or an art thesis as a level designer. And that is something that I wish I had known because I would have done a programming thesis. So uh, talk to Forseth about it, talk to Porter about it, talk to Luna about it if you're interested in doing another discipline. Um, there, I, I know Forseth keeps trying to tell me to talk LDs into doing programming stuff. So, all right, let's go to... And go here. Okay, so just a little refresher. We debugged by changing what quest stage the item that we pick up sets the quest to. Hi, how's it going? Okay. Um, we're going to say hello. By the way, your player name will always show up as unavailable because if you're like using Skinner save or just like you start from the main menu or whatever, you didn't take the time to name your character. If you're using like your base Fallout character that you've played the whole game with, it should show the name that you um, gave them. But that's like not the kind of thing that you guys need to be worried about. Is by the way, while we're waiting for me to finish talking, is uh, this a good like sort of schedule for you guys? Like this Tuesday, Friday. Do you guys like this if we could keep these labs sort of consistent? And as we as we develop further and like you guys now know the basics of quest logic and stuff, it'll probably look a lot more like lab did last semester, where like I'll sit up here and do my own work, and if you guys have questions, I'll come and answer them. Um, we'll have a lot more time for that now that you guys like know a little bit more. Hooray, give Aspen her stuff back. You got my stuff back, congratulations, here's your stuff. And now we should see that I got some caps when I'm done talking. Yeah, by the way, it takes the entities a long time to say stuff for like no reason. This sparks joy. See, did you see ball cap 10 added there? And then I completed my fetch quest. So now you have a little quest that works, congratulations. Um, Oh God, <laughs> I keep, huh? Nothing right now. Um, it did pop up there. It's, it popped up and said like you did it and it gave me the XP. Uh, you might have just been looking down when it happened. But uh, the nothing like else happens aside from that, which is the same as the quest, as, as quests in the base game because this game is a lot of side quests and stuff like that. So it doesn't, there's an option to like set a next quest if it's the next one, in it. like the Nick Valentine quest, I think it's like three of them all in a row that you like do one and then do the next one and then do the next one to complete like the Valentine arc. But you guys don't need to worry about that. Um, anything else while we're here? Okay. Um, I mentioned to you guys that Fallout's a good thing to do on the weekend. I, I tend to work the best on Fallout on the weekend and the way that I do it, like I mentioned last time, is just like 
set a time for yourself and say, I'm going to work on this for four hours today. And every 45 minutes, stand up, take a little break for a couple minutes, have a snack, pet your cat, look out the window, whatever, and then get back to it. Um, another thing that's useful to know.